Hello everyone, it's Brightmaster here, and today I have a Life on Mars set to review. This is the 7315 Solar Explorer from 2001. This set comes with 242 pieces, was rated for ages 7 to 12, and cost you $35 back when it was in stores. I have not done a Life on Mars set review since 2018, so over two years ago, and that was with, um, I don't even remember which set that was, but it was quite a while ago. And I still have two more, including this one, to review, so I thought that I'd go ahead and show you this. And you might see it, the thumbnail looks like it's pretty old, but yeah, I took that picture back in 2018 because I wanted to review it then, but... I guess it didn't work out then, so I'm going to do it right now. So, yeah, let's look at the box to be the first part of the review. Alright, so here's the box. You can see that it is a, a pretty decent size for a set of this size, and everything is showed, out in a, showed in a reasonable way. You can see that things are laid out a bit differently than in the 90s, and also laid out a bit differently than how they are today. So, of course, it shows you the set at the front shows you the minifigures up here and here at the back it shows you some of the features in the set and how you can rearrange things which is quite uh, common for life on Mars sets and here Lego's motto is just imagine and uh, here it shows you that you can go on the Lego website and yeah overall I think the box is pretty good so here's the instruction booklet. It is quite big, and I'm surprised they made it this large. And it comes with a total of 28 pages, including the back, which is pretty good. And here it shows you some of the other Life on Mars sets that came out that year. There's some poly bags and smaller sets that aren't shown here, but these are the, the main ones. And I have the Red Planet Protector the Recon Mech RP, the Excavation Searcher, that was the last one I reviewed, the Solar Explorer, of course, and the Aerotube Hangar, that will be one of my last space reviews that I, I make, and yeah, I'm kind of running out of space sets to review, so yeah, this is heading towards the some of the last ones. And it doesn't come with the box that tells you what pieces you need for each step, which makes you pay attention a bit more, but honestly, it's not that hard to follow, so... Yeah, you can see there's a, a crease here from when it was folded inside of the box, so that's it for the instructions. So here are the three minifigures that come in the set, and they are absolutely phenomenal, especially the first two. And they all have names too, so this is Mac, this is BB, and this is Doc. And of course he's the, the smart one, the scientist, and BB right here is actually a, a person who won a contest to go on a trip to Mars. That's so looks like life on Mars has a small little backstory, but I find that really neat. So now we'll look at them individually. So here is um, Mac. He's probably my favorite out of the three because I like how he has the the black uh, pants and I really like his torso a lot. And you can see he has a beard and mustache right here, which I think is really neat. And I like his uh, spacesuit that he has very much. And oh, don't get me started on this this chrome helmet and visor. It is absolutely amazing. I think this is the best regular. Well, I think this is the best astronaut helmet that Lego has ever produced, hands down. There's no nothing even close to it, in my opinion. It just looks so great. And I understand some of the other series like Spireus and Unitron have their owns, but oh no designs and it fits for them but yeah this is absolutely amazing and right over here of course is BB and that's what he looks like here he has a different torso and he has um, I don't know if that's his skin showing or if that's his yellow gloves or something but I don't think it it's wise to have your skin exposed on Mars but anyway great minifigure as well it does have some freckles as well and red hair, and yeah, overall it's a, another great minifigure. And over here is Doc, and he has, um, so of course, some nice printing on his torso, and there's a number on it as well. It says 7401, very nice as well. And if you lift up his visor, you can see his face, and it looks very much like um, 
the minifigure included in many of the studio set, which was also released at this time. And yeah, he has some glasses and a beard and mustache, and he's the scientist out of the group. So yeah, very nice minifigures. Alright, so this is one of the smaller builds that comes in the set, and just like this and the next one, they will be able to attach to the ship, which I think is really neat. And yeah, this is a little satellite thing, or it can uh, sense things to receive radar messages and things like that. And it has some posable legs that can be moved like this, and you can make it stand, or you can fold them up, and that's when you put them inside in the ship. And has this really nice dome piece that's used on a lot of the insectoid sets. And right here, of course, it has an antenna, and here it has some sort of weapon or sensor device. And it shouldn't have two red studs right here. I just decided to put that one there because that was one was the only extra piece that came in this set. So I thought that that would be nice just to include it on there because I didn't want to put a put it away with my other extra pieces. But yeah, you can see it has some uh, some peg holes and some pegs, and that's how it connects later on in the ship. Here's the second small little side build, and this, of course, is a rover. And it's a pretty nice looking thing. It has one uh, control stick, and also has a control pad. It has an arrow and some peg holes so it can attach again to the ship later on. And it does have a little arm right here, which can... Uh, attached to one of these uh, trans orange rock pieces and inside you can see that there is whoops a little stone or crystal or something and it's on this really nice looking rock piece and yeah I think it's a the rock piece looks great I could see it growing out of the ground or something or in a cave but yeah I think it looks really nice and of course you could just stick it on there and of course, this is supposed to sit one minifigure, and it, according to the instructions, it says that you should put Doc on there, so I'll just sit him down on here, and I think he looks quite nice, and he, of course, he can drive around, and you can bring the rock back to the shuttle, and I think it looks, yeah, it looks, it's simple, but it's, it, it's effective, so that's it for that. Alright, so here is the Solar Explorer itself. It's a very interesting build, and yeah, I think parts of it look really nice, and yeah, the, I'll, I'll get to that center thing eventually, but yeah, I'm going to go ahead and set my camera down, so we'll look at all the, the different parts of this ship. So here at the front, you can see is the cockpit, and I think it looks quite nice. It has this very large wood screen piece. And it has some printing on it as well. I don't think there are any stickers in this set, by the way. And of course, you can take off the cockpit. And there are quite a few insectoid prints in this. I was really surprised to see that. So here you can see there is one, and that's for the control panel. And as you can see, it has the old insectoid crystal uh, right there on one of the, the pictures. And right here, of course, you can put... Uh, the minifigures inside, so I'll put Mac inside first, and I'll put BB inside as well. But before I put him inside, you can see that there is another insectoid control panel back there, and I think that's, again, interesting. But I do like it because those are some of my favorite prints. Of course, you can put the second astronaut in there. They look really good together because, of course, their helmets match. And on either side, there are two minifigure accessories that can either be used as scanners, sensors, or something like that, or a weapon if you wish. And that's what they look like, and they attach on clips on either side, which I think look nice. And the rest of this front area look looks really nice as well, and I think that they made it look sleek and, and curved, and yeah, it's very nice. And over here they have this very interesting print right here, which looks like one of Da Vinci's, I think it's Da Vinci's drawings. Um, and I think it looks really good. It's a print as well. I think it's exclusive to this set, which is again always a nice thing. And here at the center is where all the controversy really begins. And personally, I am not the biggest fan of that center bit right here. It's almost like a, it's a 
paper-like plastic, and I would have preferred if they just used those, um, those pl big plastic pieces that are just very large and the solid plastic that's used on a lot of those, um, those tanker truck, uh, builds. I know there's an Octane one from 2010 that uses it, or they could have used some airplane pieces to make it look better, but I do have to say the print on it looks great. I just really don't like this. It's a, it's an awful, um, piece, but everything else really about the set's good except for that, but anyway, it's attached by these pieces right here, and to gain access to the, the middle part, you just pull this up. Individually, just have to do that, and that's what the center part looks like. And yeah, you can see there's a Technic frame, and this is where, of course, you can put the little rover. So, what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to get the rover here, and he wants to get picked up. So, you basically just drop this down, and you just push the rover back into here and move this down and of course put this piece right here and then of course he can lift off and fly away. You can see that there are the, the wheels underneath it you can see the whole vehicle underneath it if you uh, look at this angle but yeah it's what that area is supposed to be and here at the back here the the main um, wings back here and they can be positioned like this and again more insectoid prints right here yeah, there's one on either side and I still think it looks fine because I really like insectoids again and over here of course there's some really nice wings and I really like how they make the engines look here at the back and yeah it looks it looks really good it looks just as good as any shuttle but here of course they have some lights back here and I think it looks quite nice. And now for one of the later parts to this review is showing you how this little uh, satellite or sensoring device can attach to the ship. So what you do is you can just fold up these legs and then you just split this ship apart. So you just pull that apart and just stick it in here and I think that looks quite nice and yeah that's if you want to have all of your little components all together if you're landing and you you take everything out and then you have to leave just put it all back together and then you just blast off and fly away and something else that you can do which is pretty neat if you don't want to have this area is you can just take the front part off and then separate these and then get a little uh, shuttle like this, which I think looks really, really nice. I think this this looks incredible. So it's a little, almost like a, a little fighter, I guess, but a shuttle. So this reminds me very much of one of the more modern sets, but I think this one does look better than that. I really like the look of this. And like many of the Life on Mars sets, you can disconnect and reconnect all these little segments of the set, which I think is a really interesting idea, and um, I really appreciate it. No other space series has done it as effectively as Life on Mars, in my opinion, so yeah, that's basically it for this set. Alright, so here at the end it does come with a mini catalog, so I'm going to show you this quite quickly, just so I can get through it, and feel free to pause at any time if you wish to see something in more detail, so... Here we go on a trip back to 2001. It's more life on Mars. early Star Wars.
here of course if you want to get the lego mania magazine just fill out this form and this here is for canada and on the other side they have it for the united states i believe so yeah that's basically it for this mini catalog and now i'll show you my overall thoughts on the set so for my overall thoughts on the set i do quite like it and Everything about it is good except that center piece, and I think that was also used on some Harry Potter sets from the same year as well. I think it was used on the Hagrid's Hut build, and yeah, everything else I think is really good. I think that if you just modify this, if you really don't like it, but otherwise I think it still looks good. So that's basically it for this review. I hope you enjoyed it. Stick around for more Life on Mars reviews. There's one more set that I have to review. And that's it for this video, and I'll see you all later. Bye.